And for me, that was when it's getting returned. Hey, what's up? And today I am going to talk to you guys about the Narbox 2.0. Today's video is not sponsored. This is not part of their marketing campaign and it is in no way provided by, paid for, or talked to, or anything about Narbox. So I ordered this from b and Photo. Um, this is a big photo store in New York City if you've lived under a rock for the last 50 years. And I got this thing in this box here, super nice packaging, and this is it. Maybe some of you are not familiar with what a Narbox is and maybe see this on Instagram because when I post it on my Instagram, at Brett in real life, everyone asks me, what is that? <laughs> so the Narbox is basically a little solid state drive with um, like a micro computer in here. And the basic concept is that you can put your memory cards directly into this door and then you can download them without a MacBook or a laptop. And then in addition to that, this also makes its own Wi-Fi network or connects with a USB-C cable uh, to be able to be edited on an iPad, an iPhone, um, and you know, even a laptop. So I got this in the mail. I was really excited. I took this right out in the field. I uh, played with it for one day and then took it right on to a commercial assignment. Um, it has a very simple interface. Um, it has four buttons here. If you hold down this right one, it'll kind of boot up. You hold it down again, and it will start its process of booting up. There's a little progress bar here. Very simple, intuitive interface, just four buttons like a Nintendo controller. And then on the other end, you have an SD card slot, a USB-C port, and a micro or mini HDMI. I don't know the terminology, but a real tiny HDMI port. And then on the other end, you have another USB-C port. This is the one you charge it through. And then on the back, it has a removable kick-out lithium-ion battery. First off, the pros. This size of this thing is incredible. Uh, this is just a perfect size. Uh, as an example, like this is my iPhone XS Max. Um, it's a little bit thicker, but it's roughly the same size as one of the big iPhones which are out currently, um, which is a perfect size to be. Really also like this thing included some accessories. So this came with a really nice good length USB-C cable. It also came with a really nice little USB-C charging brick, which I appreciated. In addition to that, it also came with international plugs, which is great because this thing is for travel. Like this is, this is to replace a computer when you're traveling. But overall, this thing was just really simple, really straightforward, uh, really easy to use, um, and, and just quick. I mean, that's, that's the whole point of this thing. As a professional like me, um, I needed to be out of the way. If it was a big pain in the butt to use, if I had to use my phone to initiate backups or stuff like that, I, I would have really hated using it. And that wasn't the case. Like, if you put an SD card in here, or you can connect a card reader with USB-C, which if I had it around, I'd show you. They make a beautiful CFast reader. Um, but if you plug those in, you plug it in and it'll pop up and say, do you wanna back this up? And you hit back up now and it dumps all of your stuff right onto this SSD. It's super easy to use. You can even opt to run a checksum, which is basically the computer in here verifying that the data exactly matches between your card and your now new files on the SSD. And that is awesome. That's a very professional and needed feature for someone like me. So um, it did take extra time to run that checksum, but um, the peace of mind was really, really nice because I, it's not like I can go in and open these super quick while I'm out in the middle of nowhere. So that was nice to have. So those are all the good things about the Narbox. I, you know, I, like I said, overall this product is really well designed. However, um, I've initiated a return. And uh, that is because I don't think it really meets the needs of me as a professional. Um, to start off, I noticed that it was not very fast. Um, using it on the iPad, I found that the speeds were not really all that great. Um, I'm a professional, I'm shooting a lot of photos, I'm shooting a lot of content and to go through all that on the iPad interface was for me pretty much useless. I had it connected to Wi-Fi in the middle of an open field. We were actually doing like a hunting and archery shoot. 
Um, and so I'm doing these magazine style photos. I download lots of them. I'm using a 5D Mark IV and like we have tons and tons of photos and they just wouldn't load. They just like kept not loading. So I'd restart everything and they would load, but it was just, it was just unusable. It's not that it didn't work. It just wasn't really a usable interface for me. So I didn't really like using the iPad situation and I have a brand new iPad Pro. I mean, I have the newest, biggest, fastest, most expensivest uh, iPad you can get. So it wasn't like I was using like an old iPhone or an old iPad or something like that. Um, it just was like, it was very clearly like you are searching something over Wi-Fi. Now, of course you can connect this with USB-C and you can use USB-C directly to the iPad. And I just never gave it a shot because realistically, if I'm gonna start pulling out cables and doing all that stuff, I'll just plug it into a computer. So I did just that. I plugged it into the computer at night and I would do my editing on there. Now you might say, but Brett, they said you can edit on the iPad, you can tag your photos, you can make your selects. Yes, you can. When it comes to editing and culling photos, which is basically taking thousands of photos and making them down into a usable number of selects, or top photos, top pics, whatever you wanna say, um, there's all kinds of different ways of doing it. Um, sadly, with the Narbox system, you only get one way of doing it, and it's not the way I do it, and it's actually not the way I've ever met anyone to do it. Um, on their iPad app, their Selects app, which is the name of it, Selects, um, they allow you to write keyword tags in and they allow you to do rankings, like star rankings, uh, one through five. Um, that works for somebody and I could use that and there's nothing wrong with that aspect. It's not convenient and then I have to convert it over to my organization system. Um, and like I said, the one that every photojournalist and most photographers I know use. Um, but it just kind of stunk that we were locked into that one method. But not being able to put the metadata in, not being able to use the traditional tag on your camera where you lock and secure a photo, which is what, like I said, everybody does in the field. Um, those are pretty big deal breakers, but I looked past them. I looked past them because I was like, well, at the very least, I can download my cards in the field, and then when I come home, I'll plug it into the laptop, and I'm gonna use this just like I use my portable SSDs. Um, this is a G-Tech that I really love. I've got two or three of these. Um, but I'm like, I'll just use it just like that. And then, you know, I'll use it that way. So that was my plan. Uh, when I went home from the shoot, I plugged this into the laptop and you can put this into a mass storage mode. So it acts just like an external hard drive or an external SSD, uh, meaning that its operating system is kind of shut down and it's just like a target disk mode. You can actually do that with Macs and stuff too. Like if you want to use your Mac as an external, a very expensive external hard drive, you can. So it's basically doing that. It's basically going into that mode and it acts just like a regular SSD, um, which is awesome. So that night I went and I got on Photo Mechanic. I applied all my metadata to those files. I sorted through them. I went through, made all my tags and basically was able to make all of my edits on the laptop that night. Um, it was usable, very usable, but I was just kind of confused as to why it felt slow. But I did look past it the next day, went back in the field, charged up the Narbox again, um, and went out in the field. We shot for a whole nother day, um, downloading the cards all day to the Narbox. Worked fantastic. And also, as a quick aside, the battery life on this thing is pretty great as far as when you're in the field. Um, we downloaded cards all day for like a 10 or 12 hour shoot. And you know we turned it off in between downloads, of course, because it doesn't auto shut off, as other people have mentioned. Um, but we turned it off during, in between shoots and uh, between like downloads and uh, I was really impressed. I mean, I thought, I think it had like maybe 40 or 50% battery life done at the end of the day, which was really usable for us. Um, I didn't have any complaint about that, uh, which is great because the additional batteries are 50 more dollars, which just adds up, you know. So Monday I go back and I start editing. I plug this into the laptop with a full charge because um, I charged it again when I got home and I started editing. I was editing through maybe 5,000 photos, um, tagging, moving, whatevering, just basically making all my organizational stuff that I do in Photo Mechanic. Um, at the end of that, I was like, all right, cool. I've got everything selected. I've got my like 600, 500, whatever top picks. Um, I copied them over to another drive and I put those into my Lightroom catalog and went about my day. But now I've got a ton of content on this that needs to be transferred to something else. 
So I initiated a backup through my Mac from this to another SSD. Well, I came back about a half hour later and the Narbox ejected itself. I was confused, I emailed Narbox, and they basically tell me that this device will not charge or stay charged when plugged into a laptop using it as an external SSD. And for me, that was when it's getting returned. This is a deal breaker for me. I can't fathom having this thing out in the field all day, running it down to 30 or 40%, and then having to either have another $50 battery or plug it into charge before I can do my edits. Now, I could plug it into charge and you can directly through the device back up to another SSD. Um, there are ways around this. I just can't fathom that that would be the solution that makes the most sense to me. So now at this point, I went and I was like, well, I'm gonna do some speed tests. Blackmagic has a disk speed test utility um, that I use to test the speed on this. And I compared the Narbox 2.0, which I have the 512 gigabyte model, which is, I believe, $600. And I tested it against this GTEC G drive, which is down to, I believe, $100 or $200 now. They are very cheap. Um, they're both connected with USB-C. Uh, they're not Thunderbolt 3 devices. So I tested both of these. And again, for four or $500 more than this, I would expect it to keep up. That was not the case. The GTEC came in with a write speed of 386 megabytes per second and a read speed of 512. And the Narbox came in at 257 megabytes a second in write and 296 in read. Um, so that's a 66% speed difference on write and a 57% difference on speeds. So that's 66% of the speed of the GTEC. So it's one third slower than this on read, on write rather. And it's 57% of the speed of this when it comes to read speeds. It's not the end of the world, um, but when you're paying $600, it's a little frustrating. Um, it's a little frustrating to pay this much for a device and have it run slower than one that is cheaper. So I basically got to the decision of what am I actually saving as a professional. Um, my laptop's pretty much with me anywhere I go anyways. I have an iPad Pro and theoretically this is supposed to be able to save the computer to get it onto an SSD, which of course it does. Um, but then I end up having to transfer it to another SSD virtually immediately to actually be able to work on them for any extended periods of time. I did actually get an answer. They say this will last, they emailed me back and they said this will last six hours when plugged in. And I know that sounds like a really long time, but that's six hours off a of full charge. And at the end of the day, when I've been working on it all day, and like I said, it does pretty good, but still, if it had like 40% battery, by my math, that's like two hours, and that's not a lot of time to go through thousands of pictures, so. So for me, the Narbox got a lot of things right, but what it got wrong was kind of the deal breakers. So um, that's really disappointing for me because I think the things that they got right with this device are extremely difficult to do. Um, to have a device that's designed this well, to have a battery that you know lasts as well as it did, um, to have the right ports in the right places, um, all of those things are really impressive. Um, but I think like not having all that metadata stuff built in, having the iPad and iPhone support be kind of unusable with raw files. And you know, and then like I said, not, not having it stay charged when plugged into a laptop for me was like, that was, that was the what the heck moment for me. Um, what I would suggest in our box is obviously number one, make it stay charged when it's plugged into a laptop. Like that's a no brainer. Everybody I told this about, they were like, that's the dumbest thing ever. Um, they said it was because some laptops don't provide enough power, but yeah, I don't know. I, I'm sure that's true, but still doesn't make much sense. So as I mentioned, this particular video is not sponsored. I know some of the other ones out there on YouTube are. Um, so like I said, uh, this says I get nothing out of this. I actually just deal with the inconvenience of buying and returning this, um, which I hate to do. I never like to return products. I research everything and I researched this like crazy for two weeks before I bought it. Um, and asked a lot of questions to people I knew that had them. And like I said, I think it was like this close for me, but that last little bit is the entire value of having it. Um, it does all the things it says it does very, very well. 
um, and I think it could work for a lot of people. However, I am not one of those people and everyone else I've asked that's a professional full-time photographer like me also said it would not make sense for them based on what I told them. So if you're new to this channel, please go ahead and subscribe, hit those buttons and do all those things. Have a good one and uh, sorry there was no B-roll because I was working.